Good day everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now, I have a very unique case which was brought up by my friend. He's not able to play games in this PC as in like, not stable. So while he's actually playing games for an hour or so, right, this PC will just reboot. It's either reboot or hang. So he came to me and asked if I could actually help him out with this. And I noticed that when I boot up this PC itself, right, at idle time, it is so hot that when I place my palm on the case itself, right, it's burning. So having to say this, right, uh, I did suggest him saying that, why not you change your case? Then he was telling me that it's actually on budget. Anyway, this case is actually a Fantex uh, P300A without the front mesh. So I told him that, well, you don't have to spend heaps for a premium case, you can actually look for budget cases that has that has good airflow. So I've actually recommended him the uh, Upcon Core um, 650 Kronos, which I've actually done the review on it. If you guys have not watched that, you can actually click on the top right hand corner and it will show you the review that I've actually done on that case. Now back to this topic here. So while doing that, right, he did the purchase on that case and he took this uh, PC to me and the new case itself. So I'm going to migrate all the components to the new case. Besides that, right, he have actually spotted the uh, graphic card on my PC itself because I've actually mod my own graphic card. He find it interesting. So he asked if I could actually do that for him. So thinking that, oh, okay, I'm going to migrate all the PC stuff or should I say the PC components on the new case and I do have experience on the mode uh, graphic card that I've done and it does help the temperature. So thinking on that fact, right, I agreed and I've actually done it for him. The specs of this case, right, include of a Intel Core i7 9700K processor, a Zotac 2080 Super Twin Fan card. For the RAMs, right, it's actually a 16 gig GSQ that runs at 2000. 3200 megahertz and of course he tried to improve the situation whereby he purchased two AIO one is actually for the processor the other one is actually for the GPU he's using a 240 mm radiator from ID cooling for the processor and 120 mm AIO for the uh, GPU itself and the way that he designed this case itself right is to actually draw cold air from the outside cooling the radiator of the processor and to push us hot air out from the back which I think will affect the uh, GPU performance because the radiator is just uh, in front of the exhaust fan and next at the top right there's only 120mm fan that is actually drawing hot air out so having to say this right um, I would say that this is actually a decent um, setup but it's just that it can improve Reason being, right, as I see the uh, AIO on the GPU itself, right, this card, mind you, is running very hot. I mean, I have actually not played a 20 T, uh, 2080 Ti card before or 2080 Super card before. I have never encountered such a hot uh, card. So, as my guess is actually the hot air is dissipating, though he's actually having an AIO, right, I believe the card itself, the VRM, is dissipating heat surrounding the area there are minimum of cool air coming in and though it's trying to actually exhaust the uh, warm air but it, it accumulates in the process right there will be certain certain parts i will first show you the benchmark on the original um, casing itself i'm not a professional overclocker i'm just taking basic equipment to measure the temperature inside the case itself and outside of the case once I've done that, right, take down the readings, then I will show you the cleaning process whereby it's something interesting, which I'm going to share with you. Then next will be molding on the graphic card itself, then followed by mounting everything in the new case, including the graphic card. Once I've actually done all the molding and placing all the uh, component on the new case itself, I will do a final test on the temperature within the case itself. So let's get to it. Now on with the test, I've actually placed a sensor inside the case itself, it's reading at 29 degrees, 29.2 degrees Celsius and the case is actually fully closed, it's not turned on yet 
and based on the outside temperature i'll just leave this aside now from the outside it's also 29.6 in fact it's a difference of 0 0.4 which i will remove off now i'm just going to run a benchmark and to let it run for a couple of minutes to show you the actual temp that is holding in this case itself the machine is running so take note on the temperature itself which is actually 37.7 37.8 this is actually an idle not on load and looking below right which is actually the sensor from the outside which is actually 30.8 degrees celsius so in the event of uh, if let's say this room temperature increase as i do the testing right i will be judge on this okay right now i'm actually taking the reading of 30.6 degrees so if this increase by 31 degrees right i will minus off 0 0.5 degrees off from the internal sensor and take note on the time here which is actually 554 i'm going to run this um, using um, valley which i'm going to show you over here I will be actually tweaking on afterburner when I do the test and I'll be using the valley to actually run it. I'll run it for a couple of rounds, probably about six rounds to benchmark it. And then we see how the temperature inside the case will be. Okay, I'll set it to profile two then. Because right now we have actually um, tuned the uh, core clock and the memory speed. So we have actually tuned this, this uh, core clock to plus 25 and the memory clock speed to plus 250 and right now the uh, card itself right is actually at idle 40 degrees celsius so i'll run this probably about a couple of minutes with uh, happy valley and sorry benchmark valley not happy valley and these are the settings here i will not run on full screen but instead i'll run this quality on high resolution right it will be on 1920 times uh, 1080 which is actually a 1080p okay so I'm just gonna run this and just to show you that what's actually going on here mouse is rather sensitive anyway okay as you can see here right the RTX 2080 Super is running on a uh, graphic clock or should I say the uh, core clock at 2100 megahertz and the memory is actually on 7750 megahertz so I'll let it run and the temperature in fact is actually increasing so I will show you the stats after um, probably I would say a few runs from the benchmark which I'm going to do right now It's actually running the benchmark right now. Then just to show you back to the case, I've not touched anything. The outside temperature is 30.6 to 30.5 30 to 30.6 as mentioned. If it reaches um, 31 degrees Celsius, right, I will minus off 0 0.5 inside the case. And as you can see, it's actually climbing. It's slowly climbing. So Take note on the time right now. In fact, it's uh, 5.58. I will run this all the way to 6.15 uh, or so, or maybe 6.30 or so, and I'll show you the results on the internal, uh, the internal heat. I'll be right back. Now I'm back. Now just to show you that I'm not twitching anything or you know tuning anything, I'm just using profile two. So the settings are as usual and it's still benchmarking looking at the stats here it's still running at the same um, clock speed I should say the graphic clock speed and the memory speed okay well it's still benchmarking right let me just take you to the case itself and take a look okay as you can see right the um, temperature right now um, room temperature is 30.9 degrees somehow it's actually quite near to the case so more or less it will be affected but still based on the fact that I will minus off 
0.4, which is inside the case. And the temperature is so scary, which is actually 45.6 um, degrees Celsius. So if I were to minus off, minus off 0 0.4, right, it's, it will still be hovering at 45 inside. So keeping this temperature in the case itself, I'm not talking about the processing um, temperature, nor am I talking about the GPU temperature. The GPU temperature, in fact, is um, around 72 or 71, but I still feel that it's not enough uh, cool air. And do note that the time that I've actually tested since uh, 5 plus till right now, it's about half an hour's time. So this is actually the result that I got. Now, as mentioned, right, um, in one of my videos that I've actually considered three factors, one of them, which is actually the case itself, I'm going to switch this case to a, a much better case and also to actually mod the uh, graphic card itself because um, based on the fact that, he, yes, he did attach the ID cooler, the AIO itself, onto the card itself, but it seems like the air is not escaping off from the card. In fact, it just escaped off from the top and the surroundings of the case itself. So I'm going to do that. I'll be right back and I'll show you the process on how I actually do the modification and to improve the situation. As you have seen, I've actually done the mode on the GPU itself again. This is not my first time. In fact, I've done it on my uh, own graphic card, which works pretty well. And I will go in depth telling you um, what are the changes that I've actually done. Now, looking on the original um, cover from uh, Zotac 2080 Super card itself, right? Um, this How it dis dissipate heat is based on this fins here, which is inside. So the fan will draw air and to blow on this heat sink and the hot air will dissipate from the sides, from the front or even from the back. So it's, dis dis so it's dissipating the hot air on the cart surrounding itself. So it will bring the hot air into the case either below or above or even in front. Part of the reason that I've actually moved this right um, is basically the direction of how the hot air is going to travel. As you can see that this is actually enclosed in a box shape. So when the hot, sorry, when the uh, cold air is sucked by this fan itself, right, it will force us or should I say channel out the hot air out from the back. So this will actually prevent um, hot air from dissipate, dissipating from the sides. Now, another thing that i like to mention is that um, I've actually done a lot on this card itself. In, in fact, it's better than the uh, mode that I've done to my um, graphic card. Reason being, right, um, this strap here is not fixed. Okay, I've actually attached using Velcro stripes. The Velcro stripes over here. So that I can actually remove this and to clean the fan as and when that I wanted. Okay, this is one. Two is that um, instead of using long screw to actually uh, hold the back plate itself, right? I've actually made use of M2 uh, threaded screws with washers. And to hold on it, right? I'm actually using this. Okay, these are actually the uh, knurling screws. Sorry, the knurling uh, bolts. 
which is actually located inside if you can see alright yep so this is the main reason why I've actually mod the uh, GPU itself now it might not look very glamorous or um, I should say fantastic on this card because there are no patterns but rest assured that it functions it will function and another thing is that um, slightly different from my card itself I need not have to actually extend this to actually sit on the casing itself I'll show you later when I mount this in what do you mean by sitting on the case uh, on the uh, motherboard itself because due to card that is very heavy this is actually a very heavy card this GPU itself right if you use the original stroke itself right it will just sag but with this it will not because basically this surface here right will sit on the motherboard and it's you know flat it has a better support this whole thing here right is actually sitting on the Tai Chi board itself I'm actually working with a Tai Chi board that I'm familiar with so it will sit and making the cut look straight and not it's like straight and not um, sagging into one side I'll be right back and to show you how I actually mount this uh, how this is mounted on the case itself or should I say on the motherboard itself now this is the case that I've actually recommended my friend in fact it's a upcoming core um, Chronos 650 it's a budget case but it has very good airflow and I've actually done the review on this case itself so if you are interested right just click on the top right hand corner and it will take you to my review on this case itself now before I mount the uh, GPU on the motherboard itself right just to highlight this now most youtubers out there right they will just for demo purposes right having the case standing and vertical uh, and mounting it while it's actually standing I would not advise that at all especially when you are doing the uh, mounting of the uh, heat sink or should I say the AIO uh, block onto the processor itself and especially the GPU so make sure that um, okay for my practice right what I'll normally do is actually I will mount the uh, RAMs the processor and the M.2 outside the case and make sure that it's actually lying flat then once you've done that right then you proceed on with the case with the case lying down so once you have fitted all this in right next will be actually the uh, pump itself or should I say the uh, block on the pro uh, processor reason being if you don't place it flat and you apply the thermal paste itself and you just uh, place it right on top of it right when it's when the case is actually standing right you don't have a ground level or should I say you don't have a level um, balance to actually mount it properly in fact you will just you know probably um, s uh, sack one side then your paste will not be evenly pulled on your processor itself so do take note on that now I'm going to mount this GPU itself and why uh, I've mounted this way right laying down right reason being right when you do it let's say for example the case is actually standing and you mount it what if you accidentally you know getting your screws and such and you accidentally tap on this this might just break if the uh, GPU itself is very heavy in fact most of the 2080 <laughs> cuts right it's very heavy so do take note on this now I will actually mount not um, the fan itself because I wouldn't want to scratch my GPU so I'll just leave this somewhere then I'll mount the uh, GPU okay And make sure when you're mounting right you can see what is actually going on right now it's actually mounted then you mount the uh, fan itself I'm gonna skip this part and I will show you the finished product and to highlight on some of the points that I wish to mention to you now do pardon me if I do shake too much because I'm actually holding a camera to show you as you can see the GPU itself right is actually parallel to here and it's not sagging reason being right if you go closer right this point here where the GPU sits 
is actually flush to this. So it acts as a support so that your GPU will not sag. You might be thinking, what are those shots for? Well, this is actually the bonus round. If you guys are interested, stay on. If not, you can skip this section. Now, basically, the card in front of you, right, in fact, has been with me for years. This is actually dated in year 2006, I guess. And this is actually 2007. And this is the card that I bought two years, um, two years ago. Now, how I actually maintain um, cards that is actually so shiny, as you can see, I've basically made use of these two kinds of spray. This is actually of a better spray, which is actually the Jackie Spray 90, and this is actually the Jackie Spray 60. Both of them are electronic contact cleaners. So what I normally do, right, before I mount any components on the PC itself, I would just spray one layer of uh, this, then let it dry, light layer, then I'll just uh, plug to the uh, board and let it run. Do note that this electro electronic Cleaners, right, do not bite on um, plastics, but they do bite on thermal paste and thermal compound or maybe thermal um, tape. So do take note on this. Now, as you can, as you can see, right, um, in my slides itself, right, what I normally do, I'll just show you an example. So imagine that you have actually sprayed a layer of light coat and you've been using this card on the uh, PC itself. And when it's time to clean, right, all you need to do is actually take it out, spray one layer, let it sit. Then after about five or 10 minutes, spray thick layer and use brushes like this, the uh, toothbrush or things like that to brush on all those uh, edges, all those uh, contact points, etc., etc. So once that's done, right, use the spray again, run down, meaning to say, spray gorgeous to let it drip so all the dirt will just drip off from the cut once done right um, i'll actually go two round the first round i'll just uh, spray and let it drip then sitting this way let it drip then once it's dry right i'll do another layer second layer and once that's done right the final layer which not really layer i should say the final touch will be using this these are those uh, ladies uh, so-called touch up um face brush just do a light, you know, line kind of a thing. So as time goes by, right, this, okay, maybe I should actually show you this card. This is the year of 2006 or so, till now, it's still brand new. All right, the contact points, everything, it looks shining. So if you intend to maintain the card itself, right, you can actually sell off the parts um, that is looking brand new. I believe that most of the uh, sellers would, I mean, most of the buyers would like to actually buy these kind of cards. And having to say so, right, there is one last trick which is actually using the eraser. The contact point here, right, you can actually rub it. You will clean off the contact points. Just in case you want to troubleshoot some cards that is actually not um, detecting or so, you can use the eraser to clean off this point. And of course, you must use, uh, okay, probably not this, another brush to brush off all the uh, residue. Okay, hope you guys actually learned something. Um, this, I have been using it for years and it's been working. As you can see that the uh, RTX 2080 Supercard, right? I've actually gone through the, that process and it's working, it's running, which I'm gonna show you right now, the final result. Okay, the migration I've done and the um, GPU is in, everything is in the new casing. Now, take note on the timing right now. In fact, it's actually um, 10.03 p.m. here. And the temperature outside is actually ranging 28.4. And inside is actually 28.4 to 28.5. It's about the same. So I will let it run at idle for about five minutes. Then we'll come back and see the uh, temperature itself. I'll be right back. Now, as you can see that it's about five minutes or so right now, and the 
outside temperature is in fact 28 degrees or should I say 29 degrees Celsius and at idle speed of this comm right that is actually running right now is actually at 29.5 to 29.4 to 29.5 now I'm just going to switch over to my screen see it's actually running this is the comm itself just to show you that the specs and everything I'm just going to zoom in to this Now, as you can see, this is actually an uh, Intel Core i7-9700K and running the um, graphic card of NVIDIA GeForce, or should I say Zotac RTX 2080 Super. And I'm just going to do Profile 2 again. Let me just switch to Profile 2. Okay, hang on. Okay, this is profile two. Now I'm gonna run Happy Valley, but this time instead of 1080p, right, I have confidence enough to actually run on Extreme HD. So I'm just gonna run this test. So having to say so, right, I'm actually right now running it, and I'm gonna benchmark it. This is Extreme. Now taking a look, a look at the um, stats over here, I hope I can actually zoom in. Okay, I'm not too sure if you can see, but the, um, I should say the GPU clock clock speed itself, right, is at 2115 MHz, and the, um, Memory speed is actually 8,000. Yep, correct. The memory speed is actually 8,000. So I'm going to let it run for about 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, let me just switch over just to show you that. See, on this right, I'm actually running on extreme profile. So I'm still running the benchmark. I'll keep on running it for about 30 to 40 minutes. And this is actually a temperature. Okay, this is the external um internal temperature itself. And compared to the external. I'm back. Okay, looking at the sand itself right now, I'm tested more than 30 minutes. And the uh, room temperature have increased from tw 29 to uh, I should say 28 degrees Celsius. It bring up to temperature. I guess it's actually the uh, warmth of the uh I'll say the air in the atmosphere. Because my, I can feel that the uh, exhaust from the cut itself, right, is throwing hot air. So yeah, pretty warm. And looking at the sand in the case itself, right, the temperature is actually thirty one point eight. So my concept of the reference cut is uh, correct. In fact, it pushes the hot air out. It doesn't reside on the case itself. That's why it's having this uh, room temperature. Now I did notice that. Um, Okay, I'm just going to bring you to the screen right here. Now, I did notice that when I uh, run this right, and I've been monitoring the uh, temperature itself, it's pretty good. It's hovering about 59 to 60, which never hit 71, which I did on the old case. So this is actually a new case. So I am just going to bring it to one more profile up. This is actually the uh, profile tree. As you can see, it pumps. So you can actually judge that I have not do any tweaks or things like that because it's running, still running consistently. I've not done anything, and it's still using the. Uh, oh, probably I should actually zoom in and show you guys. Now, what I did is actually while it's still running the benchmark, right? I'm actually um, toggling profile tree. As you can see, I click here and it goes here and this pumps up and having to say pump up right I didn't do anything on the card itself I didn't overclock I didn't do anything just by default so the CPU right which is actually the iCall i7 97000K is still running at about 4600 or 4800 and the graphic card as usual is using the uh, Zotac 
2018 Super. Okay, back to the benchmark again, I should say. Okay, it's benching. So have a look at the stats. Not too sure if you can see it. Trying my best to actually focus. So just to, okay, let me just move the camera there. Okay, just to let you know that the uh, graphic card is running on 21, 15 megahertz again. It's actually the same, hmm, no difference. Anyway, I'll still benchmark it since we have actually done the uh, profile tree. Let me just stabilize this thing here. I'll continue to benchmark it for about 30 minutes or so, and I'll get back to you guys. And before I do so, right, take a look at the temperature here. And the time, time is actually 10.53. The internal um, temperature is 31.8. I'm still running a benchmark. And the external, right, is actually 30, point 30 or 30.2. So I'll be right back after half an hour. All right, I'm back and it's been like uh, some time, 40 minutes or so, or maybe more. Now look at the time right now, it's 11.47 and the temperature in my room is actually 30.4. And this, right, I've been trying hard to actually get it up, but it doesn't seem to actually go up. It just stays at 31.8 degrees Celsius. Now, let me just bring you back to the screen itself and to explain what is actually going on. Okay, as you can see here, right? Um, okay, I'm not too sure if you can see. Now, despite the uh, consistency itself, right? The temperature, okay, you can see here. Let me just switch. I'm actually run, still running on the benchmark itself. Wow, at the background, right? I'm running here a lot of programs. All videos one hour three hour videos and I even come to the extent of running this uh, they call it I think a DC or it's actually from afterburner itself so I actually run the test itself I'm trying to actually get the temperature up but it does not and to my surprise right this thing here does not move at all it will just stay at 48 49 degrees Celsius where else when I test mind you this is actually profile 2 or be whether profile 1 or profile 2, right? It doesn't go beyond 71 degrees Celsius, which I've tested on the old um, PC itself. And that test is only on profile 2, that's it. And over here, I'm actually testing on the background, etc., etc. Maybe it's actually not an unfair test. I wouldn't know, but I'm just trying to get the temperature up. But it doesn't seem to actually do that. So be whether I run this, be whether I run a few videos on the background, and while doing the benchmark. Okay. See, while doing the benchmark, okay, I can actually go again. It's been like minutes. I've been trying so hard to get this uh, temperature up, but it doesn't. It will hover set for the 7 degrees, sorry, 57 degrees, 58, 59, 60, that's it. And it doesn't go beyond. And the temperature right now, right, as you can see, okay, it did spike a, up a bit, but it went down. See, the moment when you go 32, it went down again. So this proved the theory that... Um, those people who actually get the um, graphic card as reference, right? It's pretty good because it does push the air out from the back. But having to say so, right? Having a reference card, is, it can be very noisy. So the AIO route, which actually I've done this hybrid mode. The reason why I've done this hybrid mode, right? It's because that it's quiet. And furthermore, it does the function of pushing the hot air up to the back so that it will not cause the uh, heat over at the processor um, area. There you have it. The results are out and I believe that my friend will be happily playing games on this PC for hours because I've actually reduced the uh, temperature and I believe it does help the GPU and the processor not to thermal throttle. So if you guys intend to get pre premium products and to fit in a small case right, try not to. Get at least a good airflow case and to choose the fan wisely of what you use. So I hope you, you guys have actually enjoyed this uh, journey with me as I've actually learned quite a number of things through this uh, experiment. 
All right, then. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Goodbye.